Hi, I'm Ben Stewart. I'm the founder and owner of Speechwire Tournament Services, and I'm going to talk to you in this video about how to set up student accounts on your team roster. Uh, this is a very important part of getting ready for tournaments, uh, especially if your students are going to be competing online in synchronous tournaments. Those are tournaments that are happening live, where the students are performing in front of a camera, uh, for judges who are watching from their house or wherever they may be, uh, a live round that is happening as they are watching. So in this case, usually the students and the judges are in some sort of online platform, a video platform like Yachtly, like NSDA Campus, or like Zoom, among others. There's a lot. Uh, and the students are performing and the judges are watching and completing e-ballots as those students perform. In order for the students to get access to those rounds, they're going to need to have student accounts in most every case. So this is a very important part of competing online. I should note that if they are competing in a Yachtly tournament, they don't necessarily need to have a Speechwire student account, although it's still helpful because that's how they're going to receive their electronic ballot feedback at the end of the contest. So pretty much regardless of what platform the tournament's happening on, the student account is going to be something that is integral to the students receiving their feedback, and in many cases to even competing in the tournament in the first place. So let's take a look at what it means to create student accounts in Speechwire. This is probably what your uh, coach account looks like. If it doesn't have as many buttons, that means that it is not a head coach account you would need to have a head coach account in order to create these students on your team roster. So uh, if you've been asked to do this or if you're trying to do this and you know that you should be able to do this, uh, but you don't see the buttons that are necessary, which would be namely this team roster button, uh, then you need to either ask your head coach to give you head coach access, or if you've just become the head coach this year, you will want to email me at accounts at speechwire.com and I will help you get access so that you can go ahead and do this. Once you do see this team roster button, you'll want to go ahead and click that, and that's going to bring up your current team roster. It's got a spot where you can add students, and then if you are running an account that has already been used for Speechwire tournaments before, you're going to see your current team roster. Uh, this is a very large team roster because it is my test team, so there's a lot of completely fictional people on this test team. So the first thing that you'll want to do is add students to your roster. So these would be students that are new to your team this year, or if you are setting up an account for a team that already exists but just hasn't used Speechwire before, these would be students who are on your team but just aren't listed on the roster. So there are three fields here. There is a name field where you can put in the name of the student. There is a pronunciation field. This is optional, uh, but it shows up on awards assembly scripts. So as a manager is announcing who received awards, they would then have the pronunciation of your student's name. You can do that if you want to. And the third field is the new and very important field, which allows you to put in the email address of your student. Uh, that is the email address they will use to log in to the contest, and it is also where the activation link will be sent so that they can go ahead and activate that new account once they have been registered in the system. You'll notice there are a couple of notes here. Uh, one says, are your students not receiving their activation links? Uh, this gives you some instructions on how you can ask your in IT department to unblock the addresses that the students will need to be able to receive email from in order to compete in online tournaments on Speechwire. And that's very important. If they're not able to receive email from accounts at speechwire.com, dispatch at speechwire.com, support at speechwire.com, and dispatch at speechwiremail.com, they may not be able to receive important communications like activation emails and tech support emails. So it is important that those email addresses be whitelisted by your IT department or whitelisted in a Gmail account or whatever the student may be using if they're not using a school email address. Also, there's an important disclaimer below, which goes into making sure that you have received permission, if necessary, from a parental guardian or from whomever else you need to receive permission from in order to share the student's email address. By submitting the email address on this form, you are indicating that you have received the necessary permissions and that if necessary, you have that permission on file and you could produce it if necessary. 
Uh, this is up to you to make sure that you are complying with local, state, and federal standards and regulations in terms of disclosing this information to Speechwire so your students can take part in online tournaments. So make sure that you've familiarized yourself with that and that you have that on file if needed. So once all of that has been worked out, uh, the process of actually adding the student is very simple. You just put in the name, the pronunciation if you want to, and the email address, and you click Add Member. And that's going to go ahead and immediately send that student an activation link. The activation link is just something in their email that they click, and it's going to immediately take them to a spot where they can put in a password for their new account. That'll be the password that they use. You will not know the password. That's private to the student. And then they're going to be able to use that email address and that password in order to log on and complete, compete at live online tournaments. Uh, the place where they go to compete is live.speechwire.com. So make sure to pass on to your students that they will log on at live.speechwire.com. That activation email will also inform them of that uh, so that they know where to go. Let's say that you need to put in an email address for a student who is already on your roster. If you go look at your team roster, you can click on a student's name. I'll click on Ashley Lopez in this case, and then you can put in an email address for Ashley right here. Um, so you can type that in and click update information. As soon as you do that, I'll just put in a test email address here. Um, let's just make it at speechwire.com because uh, I will then not receive the email. I don't want to spam Google with fake emails. We'll do this, and that's going to now send that email activation link to Ashley at the address that I put in. As I look back at my roster, you're going to see that there is this student account column. Many of my students are blank. That means that they currently do not have an email address entered, so you would need to go in and put in an email address for that student in order for them to be able to activate their account. Uh, you'll also see for Ashley, for whom I just put in an email address, it says not activated. That means that Ashley has not clicked the link to activate that account. Uh, if Ashley lost the link, you could go ahead and click resend link, which will send them a new link. Also, you can see that some of the students like Art Bratton or Kaylee Reardon here say activated. Those students have clicked their activation link and that means they've also set their password and that means that they're ready to go. They're ready to compete in live online tournaments at live.speechwire.com. If a student has activated their account, but they have lost their password, they don't need to involve you in that process. Uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead over to live.speechwire.com right now. And when I do that and not be logged into a, an account, uh, you'll see that there is a forgot password button. So they can just click that forgot password button, put in their email address and click reset password. And that will then give them the ability to reset their password uh, and get back into their account. Again, it's very important that they be able to receive email at the addresses that I specified earlier so that they actually receive that. And if they're saying that they're not receiving it, but their email address is correct, they may want to check their junk folder or their spam folder and make sure that it's not going there. Uh, one last little tip here, uh, even if you've only just sent them the activation link, but they're saying that they're not receiving it, if they actually go reset a password here, uh, even if they haven't set one before, they'll still receive a new password in an email. So uh, whether or not they've activated their account, they can actually still reset their password and receive a new one. And that will also actually activate their account at the same time. So they can activate their account either by clicking the link in the email they were sent or by just resetting their password and having Speechwire email them a password that they can use in order to compete in online tournaments. So that's the process of setting up your team roster and putting in email addresses to make sure that your students can compete in live online tournaments on Speechwire. Like I said, that's actually also how the students will receive their electronic ballots after the tournament. Uh, so that's how they're going to go in and see those electronic ballots and see the feedback from those judges. I uh, hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions or if you need access to an account that you can't get access to, if you're the new head coach and the prior head coach did not turn that over to you, you can email me at accounts at speechwire.com. I'll certainly do everything that I can to help you. Uh, until then, I hope that you have great success in getting ready for this 
very strange tournament season that confronts us. And I hope that your students have great experiences online. And finally, I hope that we are back in person sooner rather than later, as I know uh, all of us do, I think, uh, because I can't wait to see my clients in person. And I know that uh, students can't wait to see each other in person again as well and to have that thrill of competing in person. So thank you so much for watching this and my best wishes to you.